This is a speed through of the Lord of Darkness character that I am working on. In this part 2 video, I am adding in geometry and flushing out the form more. As usual feel free to my music playlist if you prefer speech on mute. I am modeling the mouth to be open as neutral pose so that I can have easier viewing access to the mesh on the inside and corners of the mouth. I am wondering maybe I should have used the Kepichit character head to start this model instead. Since she is a medium geometry count head. Oh well, I am so out of practice, and plus, it's always fun to challenge myself. No pain, no gain. The reason I am adding geometry slowly is to be more exacting in areas of higher poly needs. Usually those are areas that would crease or for normal mapping purposes. That need higher details. Such as more hard edges and curvy areas and bumpy lumpy ridges and sockets. That way the added geometry when subdividing will be predictable and less wasteful of geometry. Also for rigging for face shapes too, that way the line flow will be to my liking. Right here I am trying to figure out where to add more geometry at the temple and what the flow should look like to anticipate all those ridges around his eyebrows. I am guessing as I have never built something like this. I hate dirty edge flow on the inside of the characters. A clean geometry is key for making life easier for rigging and animation purposes. Working on neck geometry for the Adam's apple and neck muscles. I tend to jump around to the different face features so that each area does not get overworked. This method ensures a more balanced progression with a better big picture scope of the look and feel. Also, sometimes I can get lost in the area and grow tired. I keep in mind, I take lots of breaks to refresh my brain and eyes. Building a high-quality poly mesh is like working on a giant puzzle. It's weird sometimes I get a breakthrough, but often, I can't even recall how I got to the end product. Must be muscle memory from a past life. I know I should be flushing out his horns before getting this detailed, but I just want to get his main face done before I break my momentum. Well I can say. I officially don't miss Maya at all. I think Blender is easier to poly build due to the in-program sculpting, and it doesn't crash the way Maya does. My favorite tool in Blender for mesh building would definitely be the split poly tool. I can draw a kitty star hole in mid-space, that is just impossible in Maya. Areas that need extra details in geometry are nostrils, the butt chin, the area under the nose, lips, eyes, eyelids, cheeks, ears, and, oh geesh, who am I kidding, his head is a hot mess of gnarly lumps and bumps. I use the the smooth tool a lot as you can see. I like it to spread out the geometry. So much easier than the old school days back in early 2000, where every vertice on poly builds are hand pulled and tweaked. What madness! Around areas that have extreme bends and folds, such as eyelids, treat it like a hard surface build. It needs more geometry there for the deformation when subdividing, also to hold the light better for baked normal maps. As for the smooth brush for sculpting, it will make the features look blobby and loose, its structure and form but that is okay so early in the process. The point here is to have an even balanced poly flow. Let's try out my mesh, to see if all the extra geometry will be sufficient for sculpting. Looks good enough for now. Once I get the rest of this bust to this level of poly detail, I will sculpt his face and features, and tweak this lower poly base mesh. The last process would be to subdivide and do a dirty sculpt of detailed areas to see if I need to alter and add more geometry to areas. In the next video, I will be working on his horns, neck shoulder, and ears. See you in the next one. Thanks for subscribing and liking my content.